Many actuators have two states, either off or on, and many valves are either closed or open. But we have a situation here where we have a double tank, and this one has an upper reservoir and a lower reservoir. And the flow coming in is also going to be a switched system. But instead of closed or open, we're going to say the flow is one or two. So a low flow or a high flow coming into the upper tank. And then in the lower tank, we're going to try to meet a certain set point, a certain level that is going to be equal to three. Now, we're going to create a dynamic system, a dynamic model of this uh, system, be able to model it, and then use uh, predictive control to try to stabilize the level at a set point. So mathematically, this is going to be, we want to minimize the integral, okay, from zero, and we're going to go to 10, just for our control horizon, and we're going to say x2 minus our set point. Now x2 is the level, okay, so if you had a level transmitter here and a level transmitter here, this is going to be x2, the level in the lower tank, okay, the second tank. And we're going to integrate that from 0 to 10, and we'll square it. So any deviation from that set point is going to be penalized, and we want to try to minimize the aggregate or the summation over that time window. Now we're going to be subject to a couple other constraints as well. Okay, so the very first one is going to be the dynamics of the first tank, and that's going to be equal to sigma minus the square root of x1. So sigma is going to be the inlet flow, and then this other term on the right, the square root of x1, is going to be the outlet term. So that's like a gravity drain tank. It's dependent on the square root of the height of that tank. All right, and then we're also subject to another differential equation here, and this one's going to be uh, dx2 dt, and then we get the inlet coming here. That's going to be square root of x1 minus square root of x2. And normally, we would have coefficients in front of those. It wouldn't be just directly proportional to the square root of the height. But just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to use these equations. And we're going to say that the initial condition for x1 is going to be equal to 2, and the initial condition for x2 is also going to be 2. So they start at a height of 2. And then we're going to have sigma. Sigma is going to be in the set of either 1 or 2. So it can't be 1.5, it can't be 1.75, it has to be 1 or 2. And we're going to integrate between 0 and 10. All right, so we want to set up and solve this optimization problem. And we'll show you the you know, it's going to lead to some chatter, some on-off, uh, rapid changes in that valve. And we want to maybe try to minimize that. So we'll even do another extension of this where we look at trying to control between a dead band for the level, like a surge tank would do. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, look at the code for this. We want to, first of all, import NumPy, and we'll also import matplotlib or pyplot, and then from gecko, we'll import gecko. All right, and this is gonna be our model. The remote is gonna be equal to false, so we'll solve locally without an internet connection. And we're gonna just set up our time points where we wanna be able to solve. And I'll set this up as 0, 0, 0.01, and then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up to 10. Okay, and increments of 0.1. So I'll do that with mp.time. I'll insert just that 0 0.01 value and create my 201 time points between 0 and 10. So I'll have a total of 202 time points. Then I'll change some solver options. Now these are going to be for the mixed integer nonlinear programming solver APOPT that's going to have this MINLP gap tolerance. And here we have another option. So we'll continue on with more of these options. These are just the APOPT 
options where we set up the gap tolerance, the maximum iterations, max iterations with integer solution, a branch method. When that equals one, you do a depth first search on the branch and bound. You also have an integer tolerance. So if a value is 0 0.001 away from the one or two, then we count it as an integer value. We don't need to branch on it. And then we'll also have the MINLP integer leaves as well. Okay, and here we have the max iterations um, for the MINLP as well. So just a couple of options there to help you find the solution just a little bit faster. Okay, our set point there is three. I'm gonna define a last value because I'm gonna set up the integrator. I just wanna take the very last value of that integration. And I'm gonna set up my sigma as my manipulated variable. I'm gonna go between one and two. The integer is gonna be equal to true. So that means that it treats it as an integer variable and does the branch and bound on that variable. I'll have x1, that's going to be the level in the upper tank, and then x2 as well, that's going to be the level in the lower tank, and x3 is going to be my integral. I want to minimize the very last point of the integral, so last times x3. And then I'll have my equations, these are my differential equations, so I have sigma minus the square root of x1 equals the derivative of x1. Then my second equation is gonna be x2 derivative, okay, equals square root of x1 minus the square root of x2. Okay, finally I'm gonna have my integral, and so I'll just set up x3 equals, and I'll create m dot integral, and this is gonna be x2 minus set point squared. So those are my three equations. Now I'll have a couple other options in addition to those solver options. I mode six is dynamic optimization. The nodes, I'll set that equal to three. So we're just gonna put some uh, three nodes per time step. And then solver equals one. And then options, we'll set MV type equal to zero. Okay, so that means a zero order hold. If you have one, that's a first order hold. You don't necessarily wanna do that in this case because if you have a first order hold or a linear uh, between the two, then it um, will create non-integer uh, variables between and when you have any change in the valve. Okay, we're gonna create our figure as well. And at this point, I'll just go ahead and run the solution that I had and then let's go ahead and look at the results of this. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and run this while it's finishing creating that plot. And here is where the output will appear after it finishes optimizing. Now it takes a little bit longer to solve mixed integer nonlinear programming problems than it does just regular uh, nonlinear programming problems without integer variables. And we'll see this just with the amount of time that it takes here in order to be able to solve. It's doing a branch and bound, so for every branch, we have to have a separate nonlinear programming problem that is solved. And so sometimes if you doesn't find a solution quickly, it can iterate for many times. And that's why we use some of these options that uh, we specify like gap tolerance, branch method, and others. Okay, so we're just gonna let this one uh, run to completion. Okay, it finished here with this um, MINLP gap tolerance uh, 0 0.01. And here we have, let's see if it finished here on the solution. Uh, we have code one we're running right now. Okay, and as this is finishing, it looks like it's taking a little bit longer than normal right now. Um, just as this is finishing, Let's go ahead and um, talk about the, the next problem. I'll just share with you the, um, the results of this. Okay, so here is the sigma value that turns on and then off and on and off again multiple times. And you can see that it did a fairly good job of tracking the set point here. So I'm just gonna go here and mark this up a little bit. The set point is right here at three. And you can see the green line, that's the level two right there. Um, it's trying to make its way up to 
that set point. It does so at around time six minutes. But then to maintain it there, you can see what it has to do to the flow. It's going from two to one repeatedly. Okay, two to one, two to one. And so that is turning on and off very rapidly. And you can see the level, the level that uh, is here in X1, that uh, X1 is cycling in its level in order to try to maintain X2 at a constant value. It does a very good job of that, but it might be wearing out the valve or creating these upstream disturbances in flow um, as the flow changes frequently between those. Okay, so let's go ahead and extend this now. Um, I'm gonna share with you the result here. It looked like it finished here. Okay, so there's the result. And if we look at the output here, you can see all of those are, okay, it took about 109, 110 seconds to be able to solve this. All right, and so if you solve it as a, just change it to solver three, that's gonna be with IP opt. So it looks like this one, uh, I need to comment out some of the solver options here. Didn't like those. Okay, so you're gonna see that this is gonna solve much faster if you have uh, these non-integer variables. It's gonna to go to a valve position of about 1.75 in the end. And you can see that instead of 110 seconds, it's gonna take less than a second to solve because that's how to do that combinatorial um, optimization problem of branch and bound to try to figure out the solution. So. Here's another solution if you had a valve that could go to more states than just one and two. Okay, so there's our first code. Let's go ahead and augment this now to say, not necessarily drive to a set point with a squared error objective, but maybe a dead band. Okay, kind of like when you're driving down a road, you just need to stay within your lanes, but there's a little bit of give on either way just to stay within that bound. And this is gonna be typical for things like surge tanks where you just wanna stay within an area or region for control. So I'm gonna keep going here. We're gonna, okay, so let's see, I'm gonna close this one. Okay, let's go with this next one now. I'm gonna go a little bit faster. I'm gonna go up to 50. Okay, and then I'm gonna set my sigma as a manipulated variable. I'm gonna get rid of my x3. I'm just gonna set x2 and to a CV. Okay, so it's gonna be a controlled variable right here. And I'm gonna set a set point low that's gonna be the set point minus 0.2. And a set point high that's gonna be set point plus 0.2. And there you can see the equations, the differential equations that relate the um, those same ones that we had, we just don't have X3 anymore because I'm using the built-in objective of Gecko. And those equations, um, I'll share with the, you those equations in just a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and solve this one now uh, with this dead band instead. Okay, so I'll go ahead and open this up in Python and run it. I'll just open it up with IDLE. And this one, we will see an iteration summary because I have remote equals true. So it's solving on the remote server. And so you see an update on the iterations that are coming back from that. And you can see each time it solves this nonlinear programming problem and it's iterating. And then at a certain point, it will find its first integer solution. And then it can begin uh, pruning some of the lower objective values. Okay. so. It, it uh, found a gap tolerance of 3.6 times 10 to the minus two. You can see the gap tolerance there right here in this, uh, it's kind of hard to see right there, the gap tolerance uh, as it lowers, and it has to get below this gap tolerance of 0 0.001. So you could make this terminate earlier if you set the gap tolerance higher. I think it'll take about 100 iterations here Okay, I set it to 50 instead of just to 10. 
just to see what it would do. And it just keeps it within this, these bounds. It tries to minimize the number of times it turns on and off. And you can see it didn't quite find the best solution out here near 38 or so. But overall, it did a fairly good job of finding a solution. If we set the iteration, if we set the tolerances a little bit tighter, it would have found a cleaner solution. Okay, just slightly better objective. But overall, it did a fairly good job of finding this uh, solution uh, over this longer time horizon. And you can see the gap here to prevent the chatter, okay, is much on and off. You know, the other one was much faster in terms of uh, turning on and off for that valve. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I'll share with you the website where you can get the code for this as well as a couple other example problems. Okay, this is the double tank switch system. This is an example of mixed integer nonlinear programming to solve a dynamic optimization optimal control problem. Now there are others here on the Okay, so this is going to be the apmonitor.com slash do. Okay, and that's the course website. And if you come down here on the very bottom, you're going to see discrete variables. And here's mixed integer optimal control. And here we have um, a number of different case studies, including the double tank control, the Lotka Volterra fishing problem, and the furnace control as well. In particular for the Lotka Volterra fishing problem, we did something similar here where there was a lot of chatter and you could see something where you set up the dead band for this as well. And you can see it reduced greatly the amount of chatter of our manipulated variable. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'd be glad to take any suggestions for additional content that you'd like to see.